Hi, everybody. I've got Adam Taggart with me once again. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. Uh, interesting day. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually, it's been an interesting couple of years. Uh, we're living through some very, very, I mean, there are times when, uh, you know, a week's worth of history happens in five years. And then there are other times where five years worth of history happens in a week. <laughs> we've had a couple of years now of that five years happening in a week. Uh, and so uh, anyway, uh, the topic for today is once again, inflation, because it's transitory. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you think about the, the transitory inflation that just won't go away. That just won't go away. Yeah. I mean, so what, as, as uh, Buster Poindexter saying, uh, it is hot, 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 right? Uh, so today we just got the August CPI numbers. Uh, the headline number came in at 8.3, uh, just down a little bit from July's number of uh, 8.5. Uh, market was clearly looking for a lower number um, everything is basically selling off pretty hard right now as we look at it, except for the dollar. The dollar is spiking again today. Um, so, you know, this is this is not good news uh, for the Fed uh, nor for the markets here. Um, uh, in terms of the CPI numbers, um, uh, it was sort of supposed to be a tug of war between goods and services where goods were, were moderating, but services remain strong. Turns out it's not a tug of war at all. Um, they're, they're both... <laughs> <laughs> They're both raging at this point in time. Um, as Nomura said, there is no good news uh, across this this release today. So Mike, you and I are looking at this, this Zero Hedge article that came out with a bunch of uh, key stats here. It's the 27th straight month of rising inflation. And the inflation is just not coming down very far right now, despite the Fed, you know, since February, um, raising rates to try to get it under control. They're now doing quantitative tightening. The Fed's just, you know, incessantly talking about how uh, they are destroying demand to get inflation down. But everything they've done so far is not that reflected in the numbers. Um, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, it just matters what people feel in their pocketbooks. And we'll talk about some of the key stats here in terms of food and housing and whatnot. But it's, people are still feeling a lot of pain out there. Yeah, well, you know, what always entertains me is how short term uh, their memory is at the Fed and the government and the public. I mean, the Fed is jawboning like they're the heroes that are going to crush inflation at your expense. They're going to cause unemployment to rise. They're going to cause businesses to fail. Uh, they're going to cause pain in the economy to get this inflation that they created. This right. is 100% the Fed's fault and no one else's. And they just do not know it's 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 I it just absolutely infuriates me and amazes me that these people don't know the most fundamental things about economics. It seems to just go right past their heads. And Milton Friedman de described all of these things. You know that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Now this is not the inflation that uh, came from 2008 to 2020. All of that currency creation went into the markets and into real estate only and inflated those sectors. Some of that has, has come out, and you see this in people's bank accounts. The, uh, the top 1% of the wealthiest uh, depositors, their checking accounts, are 111 times larger than they were at the very bottom in 2007, where the bottom 50% is up 26%. We're yeah. seeing, uh, I'm sorry, 26 times, not 26%, 26 times what it was in 2000, the bottom in 2007 or eight uh, was the minimum in the bottom 50% and it, in everybody's checking accounts. Checking account balances were low at that point. The uh, top 1%, they're, the balances in their checking accounts now as a as a group they have 1.33 trillion sitting there a lot of that came from the wealth transfer of yeah. the fed creating currency and buying financial assets it caused the stock markets and then low interest rates caused real estate to go into these bubbles and a lot of these people have been uh since the pandemic they're 
checking accounts have, have been rising, and this isn't direct stimulus from the government, uh, but the bottom 50%, that is direct stimulus from the government. It's, it's the checks that the Treasury was sending out. Uh, you know, and I find it, I also find it entertaining how the uh, White House decides to, you know, they included the core CPI excludes food and energy. And uh, last month, they were saying that there was zero inflation because they're they're including <laughs> energy, which had gone, gone down. The White House is trying to redefine uh, everything. They're redefining what a recession is so that they can claim that we don't really know if we're in a recession yet or we're not in a recession, and we definitely are. Uh, but yeah, the, the Fed is responsible for this. This is uh, the increase, the, the, all those checks that were sent out that increased the checking account balances of the bottom 50%. That's the portion that, uh, that goes after food and uh, you know groceries and gasoline. Uh, the top 1%, though, you know, it's 26 times more deposits in the bottom 50%, but 111 times in the top 1%. And that is going to, it's not going to stay there. It will seek, uh, it'll, it'll cause inflation, but it'll be inflation of certain sectors. And I believe it's going to be safe haven assets like precious metals, maybe some cryptocurrencies, uh, farmland, uh, some other things like that. What do you think? All right. Well, so that's a great point. So uh, I agree with you, but let me ask the question I'm sure is on the mind of uh, most of viewers watching this video, which is um, precious metals got hit today along with everything else, right? Markets are selling off. And I imagine the logic there is people are probably rightfully thinking, okay, well, look, the Fed is going to really have to keep hiking higher for longer, right? If inflation is this in trend, this non-transitory, we'll say. Um, and so in their mind, they think, okay, higher uh, Fed hiking interest rates higher. Well, that'll that'll um, raise uh, the real interest rate and rising real interest rates, uh, bad for gold, et cetera. I, I think that's the, the logic that's going on in their minds. But you know, to your point there, Mike, I mean, inflations and hard assets traditionally for very good reasons you know they they are what performs well during periods of inflation we now have really high inflation and it's not going away anytime fast so when are the precious metals going to you know step into their time honored uh you know position as the defender of purchasing power when, when, when do we really expect them to take off here given this intransigent inflation well, you know, I I don't know the absolute answer to this question. I'm writing my I'm just finishing up my book now and it should be available in October. And uh, in it I'm exploring all of this and it looks really like gold is just being suppressed. There's manipulation going on. That's what it looks like. But there isn't really hard evidence. There's just all of this evidence that sort of adds up to wow, this is very suspicious behavior. But uh what I find interesting is the Fed doesn't realize that they've diluted the currency supply extremely. The only way to get out of this inflation is to let the inflation rage. You have to allow the free market to account for all. And, and it's this vicious feedback loop of, uh, you know, prices go up, people need to be paid more. People need to be paid more. That means the businesses are less profitable. So prices have to go up. And it's this spiral that continues on for a while. And it has to just continue and work itself out until it's accounted for all of these units of currency in the currency supply. There is no way of preventing this. What you can do is you can cause a really bad economy and you can uh, make a bunch of pain and suffering for people and it'll temporarily suppress prices and get inflation under control. But it won't permanently do that. As soon as people start feeling good and everything, these units of currency where they're in people's checking accounts or whatever, uh, that haven't chased goods and services yet and have not caused inflation will sometime in the future. There is just no way of preventing it. This this is the reason. If you go to Colombia, it'll cost you a million pesos to go to take a one hundred dollar cab ride. That's the reason. There's more units of currency 
in circulation. And even though they've got a bad economy, it's not a great, a great economy where if, if velocity picks up and the economy is great, it'll be 2 million pesos. Right. Uh, it's, it's very, very simple uh, economics to understand, but they are so lost in the weeds. They can't see the forest for the trees because they're in the macro. How do we make this thing balance for right now? Uh, how do we prevent inflation? Not realizing, oh, well, we created all of this currency. <laughs> we can either break the economy by taking the currency back, which they're trying to do. They're trying to shrink their balance sheet. Uh, we can raise interest rates and uh, that causes you know borrowing to go down with less borrowing. There's less currency creation in the banking sector and that gets inflation under control, but it won't be fully under control until uh, all of the checking accounts come down to a balance where people feel comfortable that they're, where they, there's not too much anxiety, too high an anxiety level, uh, but they can't feel safe. If they feel completely safe, then they will spend some of that currency that's in their checking accounts. <laughs> it will come out and it will cause inflation. There is no way that the Fed can get around this. They can temporarily break the economy and cause a lot of pain and suffering. And, uh, and uh, it, it's all uh, allowing it to just rage and, and then, but not creating any more currency or stimulus in the meantime is the only way to solve this. All right, well, let's, let's tug on, on that for a minute because that is what the Fed, at least what they're saying and apparently doing, they, they are following that course right now. Powell himself used the words at Jackson Hole, that households and businesses are going to going to have to prepare for some pain. That's his word because that's what it's going to take to bring inflation. It's the wrong down. solution, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I, I I know I know it's what you're saying. And, yeah, and I and the solution I think is just uh, stop meddling, stop creating currency, stop manipulating interest rates, and let the markets figure out the interest rates, figure out how much currency there is in the system, and eventually it'll reach an equilibrium and it'll stop as long as they keep their big fat noses out of everybody's business. So totally agree with you. I'm just raising this because listen to the Fed, they're not going to. <laughs> and, right. and, and you're concerned about breaking the economy. I, I think the odds of that are rising and just got even higher with today's 8.3% CPI yes. print. Because um, that's going to, like I said, tell the Fed in their minds, they've got to keep r r hiking more aggressively. And now the odds of it, you know, the, the, the big debate for the past couple of weeks is, is the Fed going to hike 50 basis points or 75 basis points at its next meeting? Well, now the odds for a 100 basis point uh, increase are now are now spiking, right? right. So, um, Which means real estate is over with, and it means the stock market is over with if they do right. that. And, the, and those were already buckling, right, under what the right. Fed's been doing so yeah. far today, right? So he, here's sort of the analogy I've been using. I'd be curious to get your thoughts on it, which is, we're, many folks are afraid of the policy mistake that the Fed is making, which is it's going to tight. It's tightening as we're heading into recession, and now it looks like it's tightening even more aggressively. Meaning, it's going to turn what might have been a garden mill recession into a particularly bad one. Right, a depression. Yeah, yeah. And, and the problem with Fed policy is it's sort of like a big super tanker. You know, when the Fed decides to go a different direction. There's still a lot of momentum that's carrying the tanker in that initial direction for a while. So it, yeah. it's not like the tanker just pivots. It, it takes a long time to stop and then begin to come back. So the analogy I use here is, is um, uh, imagine you, Mike, are walking, you're walking and you're walking too fast and the Fed wants you to slow down. So it has a bunch of runners next to it and it sends one runner to you with a 25 pound weight. And it says, you know, put this weight on Mike's back. It's going to slow him down. So the runner runs off to catch up to you. He puts that weight on your back. You start walking a little more slowly, but the Fed decides you're still walking too fast. So it sends another runner, right? It keeps doing this. It keeps sending runners to try to slow you down. Well, eventually you get to the point where, all right, there's enough weight on your shoulders that you stopped moving, right? Now the Fed might think, okay, I don't want to put any more weights on Mike, but it may have already sent out six or seven more runners in the interim who keep coming to you and arriving and putting more weight on your back and more weight on your back. And now you're just getting crushed and crushed and crushed under it. Even though the Fed now wants you to start, you know, moving. Um, then that's sort of the, the delay of Fed policy, right? So my fear here is that's exactly what the Fed is doing to the economy. It's weighing it down. It's weighing it down. At some point it's going to yeah. say, oh my God, we tightened too much. We got to reverse. 
but there's still going to be a bunch of rate hikes that are in the system that still have yet to arrive in terms of their impact that are just going to make things worse and worse and worse before we can begin to get out from under that. I see you nodding as I'm saying this. Yes, the, this is exactly right. That is uh, the the Fed. You know, there was um, uh, in Hidden Secrets of Money, uh, I think it was back in like 2010, that we recorded Jim Rickards talking about the Fed thinks they've got this dial like the thermostat on your wall and they can just dial up and down inflation. But it's 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 not a dial. It's more of a, a switch. And uh, that, you know, uh, there is this delay. And once the um, the mood of the public changes, once the pain and suffering from these hikes and the stock market crashes, the mood of the public changes, velocity will slow down because they stop going to restaurants, they uh, buy more rice and beans and potatoes right. and things like that. Well, and they, they, and they get home. laid off too. I mean, companies right. are- Well, that causes the restaurants to fail because they're not going out to the restaurants, right? It's a chain reaction. And then all of the waiters, everybody gets laid off because businesses are failing. Uh, and uh, and so it's this vicious cycle. And they're the ones that started this by flipping a switch. If they raise, you know, I showed in a video that you and I did uh, a few months ago, uh, I, I took the, um, the Fed rate hikes and put uh, them in a percent change graph and changed it to quarterly or biannual. And it, this is the fastest uh, rate hike uh, that they've been through with the greatest rate, the, the percentage change, because they're going from 0.25%. These jumps are huge. They're not measured and they're not doing it uh, on a percent basis, on a percent change. They're doing it on, on an absolute percent change, not a relative percent change is what right. I'm trying to say. And the relative percent change is the thing that is more important to uh, pay attention to, except they shouldn't have been doing any of this in the first place. So we wouldn't be going through what we're going through now if Ben Bernanke hadn't started with the QEs. This this all goes back. I mean, he left uh, Yellen and Powell with a mess that they're trying to deal with, but it's impossible. Uh, at this point, uh, it's you know Ludwig von Mises, von Mises or von Mises, however you pronounce it, uh, is correct in that um, uh, that there is no way to prevent uh, inflation due to credit expansion. The only way to the only outcomes are to accept the pain right now or to put it off and have a total catastrophe of the currency system. The currency. I'm para paraphrasing here. But that is what is up for us. At the same time, that uh, the you know that uh, the dollar is losing its reserve status because all all of the abuses that the poly weaponizing the dollar. Uh, when you you see you know Vladimir Putin just did another speech on them abandoning the dollar and and they're going to start moving away from the euro. So it really says that there there may be you know with China and Russia having collected so much gold over the past several years. The Western central banks weren't buying because they want the price to stay low. <laughs> but the the uh the all of the other the countries that are not super friendly with us uh have been accumulating gold for a, more than a decade now. And there's this meme that we show once in a while of uh of us on one side of a, a net, we're having a battle with China and we're <laughs> lobbing over uh, bundles of hundred dollar bills and there are, we're lobbing over gold bricks. They're lobbing over dollars at us currency. <laughs> right. And that you look exactly. at what the massing on the ground underneath right. each and thinking, you know what, so, they're getting a much better deal. Yeah. Yeah. So with <laughs> the stuff that the fed is doing, that's breaking the economy with the uh, reaction that the government is going to do to come in and save us, which will be, connected to a whole bunch of spending bills. Right, it'll be all inflationary. But we're at a point where, where uh, <clears throat> for every dollar we borrow, we now get about 50% growth in GDP. So it is negative. There is no way to borrow your way to prosperity. It does not exist at this point. It worked after World War II uh, in the 50s and 60s. We would borrow be, uh, a dollar and get between six and eight dollars worth of economic growth. Uh, and it's it's you know when you 
average this thing over a long period of time, it's just this straight line down uh, underneath the zero line. And now we're at 50 cents. So right. And, and when, when you're underneath the, the dollar for dollar line, every new bit of, of borrowing or currency just, expansion just gets you deeper in the hole. It, yeah. Right. It digs you a pit that you can never get out of unless there's a collapse. And, you know, uh, there will still be something called a U.S. dollar, but just like the U.S. dollar uh, before World War I was a very different dollar under the gold exchange standard. The U.S. dollar uh, uh, during between the wars was a very different dollar that people don't realize. It's not the same currency anymore. It's called a dollar, but under the Bretton Woods system, it was very different. The, the, the whole global monetary system is completely different. The way settlement is done, uh, the uh, the uh, clearinghouse, you know, we were, it was the Bank of England and it was the Bank of England and the uh, Federal Reserve. Now, and then it was the Federal Reserve. And then we're on this global dollar standard, which is the, it was an accident. The Bretton Woods system and the two previous wars had caused uh, the U.S. to accumulate uh, more gold than it was half of all of the central bank gold on earth. And so uh, the Bretton Woods system put the U.S. in charge with the U.S. backing the dollar at $35 an ounce and everybody else held U.S. treasuries and dollars and gold and whatever else they had as their reserve currencies. But it, that flooded the entire world with dollars and when we, when the Bretton Woods system failed and they were trying to come up with another one, there was, I can't remember whether it's the Washington Accord or the Smithsonian Agreement, what it was, but there was an emergency conference. We came up with a new world monetary system and it only lasted a couple of days. It just fell apart into this default that we've got where we've got all the floating exchange rates uh, and, and the global dollar standard. It was an accident that happened. Uh, and uh, it, it is now falling apart very rapidly. You know, I've been giving seminars and speaking on this and writing on it since 2009, but now it is really happening. It's very interesting to watch this unfold. And another thing that is happening right now is uh, the, in the precious metals market, when the, peop when the price goes down, people don't buy. And this is exactly the time they should be getting ready for, you don't want to wait until your house is on fire to go shopping for fire insurance. You, you're forced to buy, if you've got a mortgage, you've got fire insurance because you can't have a mortgage without fire insurance. <laughs> you buy it when the house is not on fire. You don't wait until the last, if gold and silver are a crisis hedge, they are crisis insurance. And we are going toward a crisis right now. And a lot of people just don't want to buy it until the crisis is here. Well, then it's too late. You can't, it's, it becomes really hard to get anything. I mean, there was uh, three days during the 2008 uh, crash where I was basically out of business. I could not source any gold or silver anywhere. Uh, there were periods of time, there were days where the only thing I had was a kilo bar. So the minimum investment, I can't, the gold price was much lower then. So it was like $30,000 was the uh, lowest priced item that I had. Uh, there were three weeks where I couldn't get any uh, silver. Uh, it was, you know, during periods of time, the precious metals dealers cannot find any, it's all gone. Uh, and so people wait. And, and, and during those times, if we can find it, it is very expensive for us to acquire. And so uh, you, you can't wait until the very last second and then go, oh, I'm going to buy insurance for this crisis that has already started. It's like waiting until your house is on fire and trying to get fire insurance. Nobody's going to give it to you. All right. So, um, and Mike, I could talk with you about this all day long. I do have to move on to a couple more topics here, but, but for many reasons you just outlined there, um, it explains why you're still so bullish on the prospects for gold and silver, obviously. But but right now, as we see this sort of knee-jerk reaction um, to the CPI number and um, uh, you know maybe some of that manipulation is still going on that you think eventually um, that suppression will, will, the folks doing it will lose their, their control over it as things really begin to spiral. Sounds like you're saying, hey, this actually, believe it or not, is a good time for those of us that just continue dollar cost averaging in at these lower prices. 
um, because we'll have yeah. a lot of insurance when it's finally needed. In my book, uh, you know, there is a, a little uh, air, a couple of paragraphs on manipulation, and I show uh, the uh, there, there's uh, a couple of instances now of J.P. Morgan and other banks settling with these enormous fines, but there's uh, traders that are going to jail. And I talk about, I want to thank all of these people for artificially suppressing the price so that I could buy gold and silver at these crazy, stupid, low prices. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your time in jail. <laughs> because... This is what is allowing us to, and, and they are losing control right now. And I, you know, I was going to say I can guarantee you, but I usually don't tell people what to do or guarantee anything. I, I just tell people what I am doing. And uh, the, the time, uh, there, there is something coming at us. It's something huge. And the people that are prepared will be greatly prepared, will be greatly rewarded. And those that don't, they don't realize that not taking action is taking an action. Uh, right. By, uh, standing there like a deer in the headlights, you're not taking action, but you're going to get hit. <laughs> and so there's consequences either way. And, uh, and that's a great way to say it. The deer that freezes in the headlights doesn't make up that well when the car slams into it. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, look in, in the topic of uh, getting precious metals at attractive prices, uh, we have a winner from the silver promotion that Gold Silver was just running, correct? Yes, it's Peter B. from California. And I want to thank him and everybody else that uh, uh, you know entered this contest. And we may be repeating something like that someday in the future here. Uh, but anybody that hasn't, make sure that you sign up for the email list so that we can notify you when we do. Right, right. And, and to win a future sweepstakes like this, you yes. have to be on the newsletter list anyway. So yeah, do it, do exactly. it now. Right. Um, all right. So we've got a tweet of the day coming up here. Um, we also have a chart of the day, both kind of build on the inflation topic that we were just having, particularly about sort of the pain that is lying ahead for real people. So uh, let's look at this tweet of the day, Mike, from uh, Sven Henrik, a great uh, technical analyst um, and macro analyst. Actually, I just did an interview with him two weeks ago on my channel. <laughs> great yeah, interview. He's, he's awesome. I love him. Yeah, he's got a real way with words. Um, so he has one of his sort of typically biting, uh, sarcastic comments here uh, in response to something that that Jay Powell said earlier this year. <laughs> Why don't you read this, Mike? Well, it's, you know, and it's true. Uh, inflation is low for everybody except for those that need to eat. <laughs> so as long as you're one of those people that doesn't need to ever eat anything to survive, uh, you're getting by just fine. Right. So, or have a roof over your head or have medical care. But yeah. <laughs> right. 11.4% uh, over last year's food prices is huge. And the way that the CPI calculates uh, errs to the low side always. It, uh, and so it's, it's greater than that. Uh, this is a disaster unfolding. Uh, but like I said, there isn't any way that the Fed can control this except for to step back and let the market figure out how much currency there is in the system. And once it does, things will balance. But they want a warped bubble economy, and then they're going to step in and crush the bubble that they created uh, to control inflation and, and talk like they're heroes, uh, you know, stamping out inflation. Well, all they're going to do is put you out of work. Right, right. And, and this is this headline is just classic Fed, right? Which is, um, you know, somebody might hear you say, Mike, we should just literally tell them just to sit on their hands. We'll be better off. A lot of people are like, yeah, right, really? I mean, these are the leaders of, you know, the, the the world's largest central bank. Aren't these smart guys? No. I mean, their track record of prediction is terrible. You know, so right. this is from a year ago. I misspoke earlier. This is from last June, um, June of 2021. When Powell said it is, quote, very, very unlikely the U.S. will see 1970 style inflation, right? This is when they were telling us, hey, inflation is not going to be a problem. And even if we see it, it's going to be super transitory. Um, their predictions well, it is are transitory. Way... It's just transitory that won't go away. <laughs> yeah, it's permanently transitory. <laughs> um, but I mean, th th this this is their track record. They 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 are right or they are wrong way more often 
then they are right. I think I made a joke one of the last times I was on with you, Mike, that I actually think the Fed should uh, engage in currency printing again. They should print up one more quarter because if they flip that quarter when they make a decision, their their probability of being correct is going to skyrocket. You know, g- getting to 50-50 is a massive improvement for these guys. So, um, and of course, you know, the, as you're saying, Mike, the, the people that bear the brunt of the damage that's caused by this, you know, uh, just really inefficient and damaging intervention, it's regular people, you know, and, and we're seeing that right now with this, this incredible food inflation. And I'll tell you, I hate to say this, but for my food budget, like when I go to the store and buy for the family, we have seen way more than an 11.4% increase over the past year yeah. in our food prices. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really something right now. And so, yeah, spending a couple thousand dollars a month on groceries for your refrigerator uh, seems, uh, seems like an awful lot. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is. And the big question I wrestle with is, you know, God, how, how do regular people absorb these type of, of increases? Because it wasn't like the cost of living, you know, it, it wasn't increasing in the years leading up to this one. I mean, you and I could have had a, a pretty robust rant on almost any year in the past 10 years leading up to this about how the cost of everything is is uncomfortable, increasing at an uncomfortably fast rate. But now there's just been jet fuel poured in that fire. So real quick, I just want to remind folks that um, this is basically the principal focus of the Wealthy on uh, Fall Conference that's now just a week and a half away, where we've got a bunch of the world's top experts on uh, the markets and the economy uh, really making sense of, okay, for the average person, the average investor, how do we make it through what's coming ahead? Um, I've given the details uh, on, on this conference in past videos, so I won't I won't rehash them here, j- except just to say this a phenomenal faculty list this year, uh, including folks like Lacey Hunt, Lynn Alden, uh, Grant Williams, Stephanie Pomboy. I mean, d- just to name a very few. Uh, but you're a major headliner there, Mike. I want to just let folks know two things. Uh, one is there's still the 15% last chance to save price discount. So if you're interested, go to wealthion.com slash conference and nab that discount uh, before it expires this coming weekend. And secondly, Mike, you're a big hi- headliner there and you've got a particularly special presentation this year because uh, you've got a new book coming out, right? You're going to give a bit of a sneak peek of, of its insights? Yes. And this book has been years and years of researching and writing and stuff is changing so fast that we have to go back and update uh, a chapter before we can. It, it's it's becoming a lot of extra work just because of the rate of change right now. But uh, yes, I'll be walking people through some uh, key highlights of that book uh, that show some, I've got some very uh some stuff that I've uncovered with some investigative reporting that I believe is uh, going to be a real shocker for people. And so I'm going to be walking them through some of that. The book should be out in October and available on Amazon, but a whole lot, you know, just like my last book, I don't, I don't spend much time, too much time on monetary history in this book, very little, but I spend a lot of time on the economics that have got us here and showing uh, you know, by the time you're done with this, you can see that they're meddling when they, uh, when when everything does break, uh, you can see what the results are going to be, and that uh, you know, I'm I'm very very worried about the average person uh, now, and this can all be it goes back to Ben Bernanke, but every politician that has spent us into the hole that we're in. Uh, the the this is all on their shoulders and we all have to look in the mirror too because any time that we vote for a spending bill that is deficit spending uh that is, that is also responsible for what we're going to go through and so uh we, we've got there's a lot of blame to go around most of it lies on the shoulders of the politicians and uh these uh brainiacs at the fed that uh don't seem to have a clue of, of what just the most fundamental things in economics they're so lost in the weeds uh but and and ourselves we have to blame ourselves for this i i've been i don't vote for any deficit spending that's <laughs> i don't vote for any spending bills you know there was a period of time in my life where i used to go in and, and uh, in california there was 
a voting booth with these these little pages you flip over and you're punching a punch card through these little slots and it would say you know this bill this bill provides this bond provides for the issue of so many billion dollars of bonds to fund this thing and they give it this real flowery name that usually means the exact opposite opposite but if it said provides for a bond issue no <laughs> that's all i needed to read because it means they're not living within their means means right yeah all right and of course you know the, the, in the collateral damage from all these you know that policies are the regular people, right? So anyways, if you're interested in finding out how to survive what's coming ahead, as well as get Mike's book's key insights before the book is even released, again, just go to wealthion.com slash conference to learn more and to register. Um, all right. And again, in terms of the real human cost for this, Mike, let's go to the chart of the day here, um, <clears throat> which is showing how uh, in the most recent CPI number that we've been railing about, um, shelter has now become the, the driving force for the, the high CPI. Um, so, and it's now the biggest component and we got a lot to talk about this because, you know, it, th there's pain today for all the people that can't afford this, this high increase in inflation. And then there's pain tomorrow as the housing market highly likely, as you said earlier, compresses, corrects, maybe collapses under all it these rate hikes that are yes. now being. <laughs> It'll implode. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, in the core CPI, they eliminate food and shelter, but there is a, an equation for uh, trying to figure out if somebody that owns a house was renting it from themselves, how much would they be charging themselves? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, so that's uh, what this figure is, and it's soaring. Uh, but uh, so now, the things that are, the, there's three things that you need to survive, food, shelter, and energy. <laughs> and uh, energy was low last month. Uh, this month, energy is back up. But uh, so if you strip out food, shelter, and energy, the things <laughs> so that you'll, you'll die, then there's no inflation, but you're dead. <laughs> Yeah. So, it, you know, I would I would actually agree. I'd love to laugh with you on that, but actually <clears throat> services costs have gone up too. I mean, there's no place to hide right now from the current inflation. Right, right. It It is awful. It's 100% the Fed's fault. This started with Ben Bernanke. We didn't see any of this in the retail inflation from 2008 to 2020 because um, it was all going into uh, financial assets. That's where the newly created currency was going, but it has to steal power from existing currency, purchasing power, and eventually you see prices rise elsewhere. And then they sort of opened the floodgates or flipped a switch and triggered this retail inflation by sending out direct checks to the population during the lockdowns, which were far... Uh, most of this was completely unnecessary. This it it didn't have to be this way, as Chris Martinson says. Uh, uh, so yeah, hundred percent. The Fed and the government politicians doing all of this uh, spending that is, and you know, when I look at this, the amount of spending that we're doing compared to GDP is at World War II levels, and we're not fighting a world war. Right. What the hell are we thinking? Uh, we can't borrow our way to prosperity. We can only borrow our way to bankruptcy. And that's what we're doing. Right. And, and, and again, I think this is one of the fundamental foundations underlying your bullishness and the precious metals. But, you know, as you sort of were saying earlier, we have almost sort of every player in the mix here acting in all of our long-term uh, worst interests, right? We've got the Fed meddling in ways that are distorting, deforming the system in a way that's going to, you know, cause a big implosion. Uh, we have the administration, you know, at, at every turn, it's spending as much as it can. Uh, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act is going to stoke inflation. I mean, they're just they're literally just doing the opposite of what they should be doing. And then the public and, uh, you know, we can blame this on the fact that our education system does a horrible job of teaching financial literacy or whatnot. Um, but the public, when, you know, they can't having trouble paying their bills in a given month, what do they ask for? What, what will they want? stimulus, right? Well, so, and, know, and, it's, yeah. and it's somewhat understandable, but I mean, it, it's exactly what we don't need, right? It just makes the problem even worse. So all three components are basically conspiring <laughs> to make things worse. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, like I said, it has a bad ending and there is no time in history that I can find that uh, precious metals don't account for all of this. That's the thing is, is it has been a hundred percent reliable throughout all of monetary history that uh, precious metals are your safety net here, that they will account for all of this excess currency creation and all of this debt and uh, you know what's interesting is the it's the inflation acceleration act that they just passed uh <laughs> and it's just interesting uh give anything that uh that has a title that people think will help them out and and you can sell it to people they do not do their own they they're it, an uninformed public is very dangerous uh and this is what we see we get this which I guess brings us to our uh, meme of the day, doesn't it? Uh, it does. So let's go to there. Your your producer Dan <laughs> Rudebach is going to going to have my head for letting this particular video get so long, but it's been great, Mike. But but yes, everything we just talked about dovetails very nicely into this meme of the day. Okay, so we've got the administration saying we're going to kill inflation by making businesses pay their fair share, and uh, business has to pay its fair share, and so the business is putting a notice that. A fair share surcharge will be added to all widget sales. <laughs> and this is true. Everything they do has to get passed on to the consumer or the business is out of business and you can't buy anything. I want to thank everybody for watching and I want to thank you for being here, Adam. Thanks. Always a pleasure, Mike. Take care. Okay. Bye. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, and global storage options. Get the best-selling book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, for free at goldsilver.com.